What's it like starting a business just a few weeks before a global health pandemic that closes you down? We're about to find out. This is the Kawartha Small Business Podcast. We have business conversations for the Kawartha commute. I'm Brian Rump. And I'm Matt Garrity from Matt EG Digital. All right. And we have with us today, Jenny Connell, who opened a brand new store in downtown Lindsay just a few weeks before a pandemic. Uh, Jenny, tell us about yourself. Um, well, I have a nursing background and I've grown up in Lindsay and um, I am a lover of sustainable living. So I decided to open a um, what we call a sustainable living shop or a zero waste store um, in our small community eight weeks before COVID. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's going well and um, I'm still nursing and I continue to nurse through COVID. So it's been an interesting journey. But uh, I'm here today to talk to you about it. <laughs> awesome. So tell us uh, about the store. What's it called? Where is it? So it's called Unwrapped, and it is downtown Lindsay at 101 Kent Street West. It's located between Classic Flowers and Brittany Bros. And um, we sell a variety of um, zero-waste products, like bulk refills of soap and um, household cleaners, body products, and then plastic-free goods for your home. So things like um, wooden brushes and anything in our store is compostable or biodegradable. Um, we offer free recycling programs in the store, and um, we're just trying to spread the word about sustainable living. How'd you get into zero waste? Um, slowly. So I would say that it started after I had kids. Mm. And uh, I realized, one, how much plastic came with everything. I was using conventional diapers and wipes um, and a lot of harsh chemicals and products, too. I remember I did watch a documentary on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately, but it was about um, Johnson & Johnson in particular mm. and um, chemicals that are in baby products that are actually really um, horrible for babies, but we are that everything's marketed properly. So we buy all these products and lather them on our kids, and they're really... <laughs> <laughs> dangerous <laughs> and they're bad for the water table they come in plastic containers so all around horrible um so i started really slowly i got into essential oils which i think a lot of moms do anyways and uh but from there started making some of my own products um mm. and started cloth diapering and i think once you make a few small changes like that you it snowballs out of out of control after that you're like well if i got rid of this i can get rid of paper towel if i got rid of this i can get rid of um stain remover and so it started like that for me and I would say for about three or four years I was working on that just by myself and um, learning about different options and then one day I got very frustrated that there was nothing in Lindsay <laughs> there's nowhere in Lindsay that you could buy um, a refill of soap or something so I'd been driving around to Aurelia to Peterborough to different stores that were doing this and uh, had been a customer of those stores for a few years and um, just thought I can do this <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> that's where the idea was born anyways how did yeah how did you go from like that personal passion to oh yeah I can do this and I'm gonna drop everything and open a business like well this is weird for my entire life I have I mean, I've lived in Lindsay my entire life except for a very short stint at university I have always wanted to have a store and uh, I guess I've always just kind of looking for an idea and I've seen a lot of businesses open and fail in Lindsay. So uh, it had to be the perfect idea. At one point I did think I was going to start a cheese shop. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be called Say La Free. But anyways, okay. great business idea for anyone looking for a store idea. But um, You should have kept that name private. Because now <laughs> like, sweet, I'm opening it's that. Such a great know. name. So I've always been um, thinking about owning my own business. And uh, I love nursing, and it is a passion of mine, but there are a lot of politics involved in nursing as well. It's not just nursing, unfortunately, especially when you're working in a hospital setting. So 10 years into nursing, I think I was starting to feel a little bit restless and starting to go back and think about this idea of owning my own business, and it really just came together one day. Like, I just thought this is it. And then I was in a huge hurry because I thought this is a great idea and someone's yeah. going to take someone's it. Someone's going to do so that. So I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's gunning for it. What did you do first then to start your business? Like, did you come up with a name? Did you just go out and like rent a place or like what was the first thing you did? I came up with a name and I remember messaging a really good friend of mine and, um, and I had two different names and I actually don't remember what the first name was now, but she said unwrapped, go with unwrapped. 
and she didn't tell me it was crazy, so that was good. <laughs> and so later that day, I went on and I registered. I paid like $60 or something to register the name. And that was before I even told Sam. So I just knew, like, I'm going to do this. Um, so I registered the name. Sam got home from work. It's my husband. And I told him, just so you know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to open a store. It's going to be called Unwrapped. And I actually got a business license. And he was very cool with it. He just said, okay, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> I think when he, he could see that shift work and the nursing lifestyle is like starting to weigh on me a little bit. So, um, at two different times in our relationship, he's told me, you know, you should do it. You should open a store. So I think he was actually really excited that I finally just thought, yeah, I'm doing this. Um, so that was the first step. And then I spent hours and countless hours for months looking up products um, and then emailing distributors and that's an awkward conversation because you're kind of saying to the distributor I'm not actually in business yet but I'm thinking yeah. about getting into business so could you send me all your prices and then I mm. can weigh the options if I really want to do this and anyways a lot of the businesses are small Canadian businesses and they were really offered up all of their wholesale cool. pricing um, because until you look at all those prices and decide what your price will be, you don't know if it's going to work. So mm. it's an immense amount of work, months of like full-time work planning. Yeah, that's before. really good that you said that because like that's where a lot of people don't do some of that. They mm. just jump in and then they're surprised by yeah. certain products and like you realize some there's like no margin in it, other exactly. there's lots in it or it's figuring out what mix you need and it's there's yeah. so much out there i know you know my first thoughts for some of the things you sell is like where do you even get this stuff like, yeah and i get asked that a lot um sometimes i'm nervous to say i have had people come in and say you know can you send me a list of your distributors and that's really personal like yeah. that's a tough one because like, i feel like saying to them whoa like that took me four months yeah. of eight hours a day on a computer to compile like, absolutely not but yeah in the most friendly way possible but I do find people come in looking for that information and that was something that I like poured my heart and soul into so that's yeah. a tough one <laughs> that's weird I wouldn't give them that information yeah no I don't <laughs> no there's no way I'm sorry like, I, if they want to like we're curious about okay where can I get this product direct yeah. maybe like a product here and there but there's no way I'm handing over a list why I have yeah. a store yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I could have walked into any number of stores and asked the same thing but that's that's the thing you do that makes you unique is look up products that you feel are yeah. right for your business and then research them and contact the distributor directly have the conversation with the people who make them and so yeah it's interesting I've been really surprised by how many people have done that actually but Mm -hmm. So an immense amount of work went into that. Um, and then finding a location was really difficult in Lindsay, actually. So that was the next thing. I thought, well, I need a spot. And I was in a hurry. I really was. I didn't want to tell anyone. I told Sam not to tell anyone this idea. I thought it was so genius. Um, so I was looking for a location, and uh, it was tough. I, I looked into about four, and I almost signed two leases before I found the one that I found. Mm. Yeah. So, anyways, I was so lucky. Our location is amazing. And, yeah. Yeah. Why did you decide on that downtown Lindsay location? I've grown up in Lindsay, and I really feel strongly that you need to be on Kent Street if you want the highest amount of walking traffic. So you could get a shop on on William Street, on Russell Street. You are not going to get the same people walking by. You're like not going to get the cottagers. Mm -hmm. You'll get lots of locals, but it. We have so many people come in the store who are. I mean, COVID is a bit different now, but who are out <laughs> shopping for the day, who are at lunch at the Olympia because they're in town for the day. Um, and I don't, I just feel like when you're in a small town for a day, you're like, oh, we'll go on the main street. Um, True. Yeah, I just think it's really important. Yeah, downtown Lindsay versus like the other part of Kent Street, like the big box location, much more like artisan, unique. That's right, and it's the right kind of customer. So I know myself, I avoid going uptown Lindsay at all cost. I mean, that was really hard to, to explain to Sam. He couldn't understand why I didn't want to rent a spot across mm. from the new LCBO in this big boxy store kind yeah. of place. And that was, I was dead set against it. The rent could have been nothing. You're not going to get the same type of customer. The people who are going uptown are looking to go to Loblaws. They're looking for a deal. They're going, yeah. you know, it's Or not... they're driving everywhere. Like, I think there's something to be said about being in a walkable area yeah. where you're going to different 
places you can either walk to or you could park your car and go do a bunch of stuff versus the big box like everything's designed for the car that's like, right and yeah. that's what Lindsay is about to me and i've grown up here and that's who how i've always been is i park downtown i go to the butcher i go to burns i go to the dairy i go you know it's like you walk around you talk to people i do find that the big box store mentality is so gold and you're just standing in lineups getting your car or driving to the next place and so that was really important to me just the community aspect of things to be downtown too Oh, that's great. Yeah, your store is well suited for downtown shopping business of yeah. like people casually walking around. Just, yeah, happening good, upon us. Yeah, good price points, cool stuff. Let's go in there and just see what it's like, buy something, and then mm-hmm. keep them coming back. So, yeah. that's really cool. And yeah, then, the soap helps. Soap is like a renewable, you know, you need you need laundry soap. So, yeah. you can come back. And mm-hmm. maybe we'll have something new when you come <laughs> back next time. Or just to like wrap your mind around like... Some of the things that are available, I know as someone who's trying to, you know, look at their own consumption of stuff, like you don't know what's available, you know, you don't want to maybe try everything at once. Exactly. So you want to go in, just see what's there. And, you and might... I think the most common thing we get is that, and then people say, you know, I want to try everything, but I'm just going to use up what I have. And that's great because that's the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, and then you'll see them come back and be like, okay, I'm finally done my hairspray. Like, I'm going to try this hairspray. I'm finally yeah. done my toothpaste. I'm going to try this. And so that's cool because they can like one thing at a time yeah. try and, you know, maybe you like the toothpaste, maybe you don't. Yeah. <laughs> like you, that's the nice thing about buying in bulk too. You're not like... Some health food stores, you have to buy such expensive products. Yeah. And then you take it home and you don't like it. It's like, terrible. What do you do yeah. then? So the bulk aspect of that is so nice. Like, take home three toothpaste tabs. If you don't like them, you don't need to buy them again. But you didn't waste. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And that's where I am with, like, one of the products I bought with you guys was the natural deodorant. I was right. like, well, I'm going to try something. Like, this natural deodorant, I've heard about it. And I started using it and loved it right away. I was surprised how quickly I liked it. It's amazing. And how effective <laughs> it was. But then like, I was in the shower one morning. I was like, this soap is poison. Like, this shampoo <laughs> is poison. Like, why it am I putting happen. natural great deodorant on? Because I'm concerned about <laughs> yeah. the poison of deodorant. But then I'm like smearing chemicals of this random soap. And I'm like, I got to get back to unwrap for soap and shampoo yeah. and like moisturizer. And it's just like a trickle down effect, and which is, is great. And this is with the kids. It's like, you know, mm. I'm so concerned about what I'm putting on my babies. And then slowly over time, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm putting all these chemicals on me. And yeah. Sam, you've got to stop. And mom, you too. And you, yeah, it's like just gets out of control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even just, yeah, the waste, that stuff, like throwing out stuff that's like lip balm that was blown my mind yeah. lip balm that is like done with this lip balm put it in the garbage does anyone ever finish <laughs> one you no there's always like an yeah. inch left in it yeah I find they melt when they just get gooey by the end of it and you're yeah. like I'm not putting that on me anymore it feels like glue on my lips yeah it's crazy so COVID so you yeah, open up back to COVID you know, watch <laughs> you know first of all I think you know I was thinking about the challenges you know we are a very seasonal community. I remember seeing like your initial like coming soon or launching and it's mm-hmm. like, ooh, like launching a store in January <laughs> is hard enough in this uh, setting. In this um, location, setting, everything. And then COVID hits. So walk us through, <laughs> you know, some of that, you know, story of you know, what did you think? So... I guess opening in January, for sure I thought someone else was going to have this idea and I didn't Mm. have much time. (laughs) Really, So I thought, I've got to do this. I got the location, perfect location, and I had it for about um, six to eight weeks before I opened. So I had the store all ready to go and I just thought, I'm going to do this. And if there's any kinks, I'll be able to work them out before cottager season. (laughs) That was sort of my reasoning. I thought, if there's huge problems, it's January. So there's not that many people yeah. coming in and I can sort things out and have this store like a well-oiled machine by the time it hopefully does get busy. I had a lot of people saying, why would you open a store when construction started? Mm. <laughs> Great question. But um, I, I mean, construction is a three-year project, so I yeah. wasn't going to wait. So again, I just thought, do or die, I'm going to try it and see what <laughs> happens. And uh I mean, that's all, that's really it. It was a huge risk, huge risk. But um, those were my only concerns at the time. And then, of course, we started hearing about COVID. Um, 
which I think at first I thought, not was a joke. I knew it was serious, but mm-hmm. I just thought, this is far away. And I remember I wanted to go to Ikea one day and my mom saying, like really warning me against it. And I really did laugh at her. I was like, you are so crazy. You're watching too much news. Like, this is yeah. happening way far away from us. And anyways, it was shortly after that when everything blew up. Um, so, of course, I didn't see a global pandemic on the horizon. <laughs> um, yeah, but I really just thought January construction, I it will give me time to get my feet under me and to get things going before, you know, the store gets busy. I thought that was a great business plan, actually. So that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why I went for January. But super smart, super cons- especially considering, like, you didn't have, like, a business background before to, like, yeah. actually think <laughs> ahead that way. Yeah. And I think you're doing something that's new so as much as retail is you know been around forever Mm -hmm. um you know you're ahead of the curve and you know your reasonings for wanting to get going fast is someone else is going to do this and i think to me just the idea of like refillable Mm -hmm. shampoos and different stuff i'm not sure that i've seen that places before or if i have it's been something i don't even know how it would work but you know you want to get out there yeah, and it was. That. I was in a hurry for sure. <laughs> yeah, so you get in a hurry. So tell us about the first few days um, <laughs> of, you know, when you realized that it would really affect COVID. your business. Yes. Yeah. So about a week before, I mean, obviously, I was watching the news really closely, um, and I was in the store, and you know, getting all the updates on my phone constantly about um, sporting events being canceled, and it's starting to move in a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. It's affecting Toronto and um, still really, really at that point, naively thinking that in Lindsay, this is not going to be a thing. It's going to be fine. And then I'm sure as the rest of the world, Thursday, Friday happened um, and everything blew up and schools were shut down and um, a couple businesses, downtown business owners were really freaking out. Um, and a couple businesses had closed and I won't name them, but I remember honestly thinking, God, why are that they to close are they Mm -hmm. crazy like why are they doing this and you know really that was saturday um and here i'm closed on tuesday so it was a very (laughs) fast quick timeline (laughs) but i remember saturday hearing two two different stores downtown had closed their doors and put a sign on the door saying you know due to covid we're we're closing and thinking they were nuts and uh calling around to other shop owners who are a little bit closer with and having conversations and are you still open what are you doing are you staying open and then at that point i really had wished that the government would have made a decision (laughs) because I feel like we were all really in limbo and we didn't know what to do and we were watching some businesses close and other ones remain open restaurants were still open and I had no idea what to do I also had yeah no business background and I'm my only employee I had no one to bounce an idea off of and uh, I did feel quite lost and I really wanted the government to just make an announcement close like (laughs) that's it so um I really watched what other businesses did, to be honest. And then come Tuesday morning, I was one of the only ones still open. I was like, this has got to end. So I just turned the sign and closed the door. But that said, like Sunday, I was still posting on social media, come get your hand soap. And I really didn't think this would affect me. So it was a very quick turnaround. So Tuesday, I closed the store and uh, I went home and I made a giant pot of coffee and I tried to figure out (laughs) e-commerce by myself. (laughs) <laughs> were you selling stuff that week even when you were closed without e-commerce though we or had a you... very busy oh no so we had a very busy weekend actually which is weird because covid was blowing up but i don't know if people were kind of out panicking yeah. panic buying um and then tuesday I, did, I made the website that night i honestly stayed up all night and made a website with every product i sold in the store on it and uh, announced it I think I had announced that evening, like, there is a website coming. We're closed, but there's a website coming. And then by Wednesday morning, I was done, announced it, and the community was unbelievably supportive. Mm-hmm. So immediately, I started having sales. Um, even if it was just with gift certificates, people people I know, family, friends, wow. good customers buying gift certificates. Yeah, and so, I mean, and that was a learning curve. The first day, I didn't know that I didn't have the tax turned on. So I had, you know, like all these yeah. like glitches that I'm trying to work out. But, um, so that was like, a stressful week. Um, but I was like overwhelmed by the amount of support I mm-hmm. had immediately. So within 24 hours of the website starting, the community was being supportive. And yeah, it's great. 
I feel like you don't realize how impressive it is that you <laughs> put that website together in 24 hours. It was so hours. much yeah, coffee. So... <laughs> it's like, and maybe some wine. Yeah, it's, hard, <laughs> it's hard to build a website in general in 24 hours. I wouldn't say impossible because you proved it wrong, but I would have said it's impossible to build an e-commerce website in 24 hours with the amount of inventory that you have. <laughs> I don't think you realize how impressive that is. It's <laughs> absolutely you. incredible. And you're like, you're so, like, you're not so concerned I about it. I feel like you're in... just panic mode. You know what yeah. I mean? You just, like, do or die kind of thing. Yeah. The Did... one really hard thing about it was uh, bulk. Like, now I can't offer bulk. I've opened a refill store, and I can't offer yeah. my bulk items. So the one thing that was difficult was to price out what's going to go in what size mason jar and how am I going to oh, charge yeah. for this mason jar and I ended up doing a deposit program and it all worked out at the end but it was, it was yeah. wild <laughs> so how's like the e-commerce experience impacted your business long term like how are you thinking of the retail store now with the e-commerce I'm so happy it happened like silver linings I honestly I would never have made a website ever especially in 24 hours um, and then just having people be really supportive and patient with me, because it did take time to work out some glitches. I would never have done that without COVID happening. So mm -hmm. I, for that, I am really thankful because now it's really convenient. We're offering, even with the second wave, I think people are nervous. We're offering free delivery again. We ship Canada wide. We shipped some packages to British Columbia today. Wow. And, um, yeah, so I'm so happy about it. And uh, that's one of the, yeah, only things that I'm happy about with COVID, I guess. Yeah. But really happy that it, I remember someone coming in my first week and saying, are you going to have a website? And I was kind of offended. I was like, well, look at this great store. I don't need a website. Come and see me. Come talk to me. And here now I'm like thrilled that we have the website. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think right. now, like, you can weather a second wave. That's right. I'm really, if, I, if COVID's prepared me for anything, it's that I'm, not I'm like on my toes I guess because I, I I'm so happy actually my first year in business wasn't free sailing because I think it would make you a little bit lazy if everything mm. had been perfect here I had one February was like a snowstorm every day <laughs> yeah. I had to be closed for a few days because of the weather um oh, yeah. construction COVID it's like I have had a few other business owners tell me if you can survive this year you are going to be fine so that's really great news <laughs> how much of your business now you don't have to tell us like exact numbers but like percentage wise like how much is the e-commerce versus retail like how much business is online versus um, it's probably 15 percent right now and it's kind of growing with the second wave during covid it was well, it was 100%, no, <laughs> obviously. Okay. But then after we opened for it throughout the summer, it was it was still high. Um, and then I think about August, September, we noticed a huge influx of people coming in the store. And mm. now, since we've been using some more uh, digital marketing tools, our, our sales have increased. And mm. we're seeing we're seeing sales in other provinces and things like that, which we hadn't previously been seeing. So that's exciting. That's cool. Do yeah. you want to see more from the e-commerce side of things or more from in-store? Definitely. I mean, I love, I really do want the store to stay busy. And th those are local customers who are regulars. Um, and obviously a huge part of our business is the refill and that's not really an option online. So the people who are shopping online are buying products, um, you know, stainless steel containers, things like this. So I want to, to see obviously as many people, Lindsay coming in to refill their products. Um, but of course I want the online sales to stay up because it, it's great. It's, it's, that's our name out there. It's good advertising and they're, they're easy sales. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, I was just thinking, um, just in terms of overall consumers and doing things that are more sustainable or other stores, are there any kind of cool things you sort of see as trends or that maybe oh, yeah. some people are doing that... Um, Do you mean locally or like in this business? Uh, kind of? Both, I guess. Like so in the I business. actually see on Instagram in particular, um, this kind of story is popping up all over Ontario and Canada. Oh, okay. um, so now I follow, I think probably well over a hundred stores that are very much like mine, oh, the wow. exact same business model. Um, and it's really a cool little community because sometimes, you know, we'll, we all follow each other. We don't know each other personally, yeah. <laughs> but you know, 
I'll be like, well, message message Natalie and see where she finds <laughs> this or that. And yeah. like, so you do kind of help each other out a little bit. A little bit. So obviously, we're all in competition. We all have e-commerce. We all offer free shipping in Canada and that kind of thing. But it's been really cool to see that. And um, that's definitely how we see products pop up now. And I was like, hey, look at that. It's like a duster, like a washable duster. Yeah. Where did they get that? And it just prompts you to think about new products. And But this kind of store is going to be more mainstream i think so almost every couple of weeks you see a new one opening opening soon the refill something oh, okay. they're all oh my god the name refill and like all of them are really happy I went around. Yeah. That's <laughs> fascinating. i remember i knew nothing about zero waste when you opened oh, cool. but as soon as you opened everyone around here that could offer anything kind of zero waste i can think of three different businesses me too <laughs> less than a kilometer of your store mm-hmm. immediately were advertising zero waste products they had little like stand-up signs outside and things online yeah. like I'm you so were the catalyst that. for that because like you know that's com- you know competition in a great way it's yeah like friendly competition it's like okay you decided to switch from plastic bags to paper awesome yeah <laughs> like, and it creates so a market funny. as well yes right yeah. now people are looking for those things yeah. yeah what about is there much of a sort of community of local business owners who are doing some of that that's yeah i guess like i think that um a few businesses in town are sure making changes like for the good covid hasn't helped so i would say Mm. before that i noticed a lot of changes and was really proud of like some changes that were happening in the community and they were just about to do the plastic bag ban and uh, so that's one thing that's been really unfortunate um but I think uh, as things move forward, that people like businesses downtown are certainly dedicated to being sustainable. So mm. yeah, that's really uh, neat. Um, I know uh, just some shout outs. Uh, we were talking uh, before we started recording of like you know people who use compostable takeout stuff. So like the mm-hmm. Olympia yeah. has takeout containers, fresh fuel, and they're compostable um, straws and uh, containers. Uh, in Fenland Falls, we have SIP. They want to shout them out for having some uh, coffee, compostable, everything. Another great one in Fenland is a country cupboard. They're a local food store, and they're completely plastic-free in there. So they uh, hmm. they do frozen yogurt, and like their containers and spoons and everything are compostable, and they have no plastic bags. They're all paper. It's, yeah. It's yeah, it was good. A great um, store. Shout out. Ju- yeah. Julia, the Julia. owner, she's a... <laughs> She's great. She used to have, um, I think, some newspaper columns around here. She's been... Uh, yeah, she's an actress. Since before she bought Country Cupboard, uh, she keep, helps spearhead keeping the uh, beach clean in Fenland. Mm, huge. Um, I actually have some empty containers in my car right now that <laughs> uh, are going to get filled with some bulk food stuff there later. You get a discount if you bring in your own containers. Yeah, and she stuff. worked tirelessly during the pandemic, too, delivering and, yeah... Yeah. yeah, she sold me my first safety razor. Oh wow, there you go. that's uh, <laughs> great. So it's just ni- really neat to see that community, um, you know, start. I think you're ahead of the curve on a lot of these things, um, which is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I've only been in Lindsay for going on three years now, but you were the first business that I recognized around the Corth Lakes that like really everyone was talking about. And like, <laughs> so everyone was so excited, interested. I, I've never told you this or confessed this to you, but I was like falling all over myself to work with you because I knew how excited everyone was to like to go in your store. I'm like, I just have to work with Unwrap just for some like brand awareness of my own business. Yeah. And I was like, I was going to go in there that first meeting that we had. And like, if you're like, I got a $20 a month budget. I was like, sold. <laughs> you got it. You got me. I literally was like, so any, like, I was like falling all over myself to work with you. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. And it's so funny because if people knew I knew nothing. I mean, I know about my products really well, but on the business end of things, this was a huge risk. Like, oh, absolutely. There were people yeah. at the hospital asking me, so did you take a business course? And I'm like, no, I didn't take a business course. <laughs> like, I'm... <laughs> I've watched some TV shows. <laughs> I don't know, you know, what to tell you. It's yeah. gonna be fine. But yeah. yeah, I watch Shark Tank every Friday. Yeah. I know everything about business. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> exactly. Deal or no deal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. All righty. Um, that's all the questions I think we have. Do you want to finish uh, us off with a shameless plug? Oh. <laughs> well, um, oh, I don't really, I don't really have shameless plugs. Our store is great, and we're getting ready for Christmas. And if you want to buy a sustainable Christmas gift for someone in your life, please visit around. I've got a good final question. Okay. Shameless plug. How do you recommend other businesses get on the path of zero waste and sustainability? Like what's the first step for other businesses to do that? Well, it helps that the government is still going ahead with the plastic ban. So by 2021, all of that will be gone. And that's huge because that is the only, the government banning that is the only way that people are going to make Mm -hmm. those changes because they're cheap. So, you know, businesses obviously are looking for the most cost effective option. So that's going to be huge. And that's not optional, which is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> optional changes you could make, I think, would be, um, I think about, like, even in just staff rooms. Staff rooms. Get rid of your curing machines. Mm-hmm. Or there's a great company called TerraCycle that offers free recycling programs. So whatever your business is, they offer hundreds of recycling programs. Look it up. Find a couple boxes that can apply to your business. So I've suggested to staff rooms at the hospital that they get um, lunch waste beds. So you can put Ziplocs in it. You can put yogurt containers in it. All these things that are not um, com- compostable or recyclable can be even... I mean, this company turns things into like picnic tables and park benches. Mm-hmm. So it's getting a second life at least. But there's a lot of free programs out there that companies could be looking into. And um, you could always refill your hand soap and dish soap and things like that and unwrapped. Cool. I hope we don't lose our curing sponsorship. Right. That'll be a tough one. <laughs> unwrap the sponsor. That's fine. Awesome. All right. Well, that sounds like an episode to me. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for having me. Make sure you visit Unwrapped. And if you'd like to uh, talk to us more at the Core of the Small Business Podcast, we'll set it up. Uh, you can send us an email at setitup at coorthasmallbusinesspodcast.ca.